welcome welcome we're back it's the winsome show where have we been i know you missed us i definitely have missed you well obviously a lot of things have been going on since lockdown but we are no longer locked up they're letting us out cheese so we've got a packed show for you today we're going to be talking about this wonderful book pioneering women speak transformative leadership on the rise so as some of you know i am a book confidence coach i'm also a publisher as well and i've brought together eight dynamic women to tell their stories in this book it's an amazing upliftment i talk about reflecting on resilience how you can build that resilience muscle to keep on going when life knocks you down because if you look up you can get up you don't need to stay in the gutter my brothers and my sisters we are here on the hottest day of the world uh, in uk the hottest day let me get my words right we are here on the hottest day in uk can you imagine sweating so i'm going to sweat off about two three pounds after this so ladies and gentlemen before we get into this we do have to say a prayer for cuba you know in this world so much is going on hearts are troubled and we're seeing uprisings, we're seeing the revolution. Gil Scott Heron talks about the revolution will not be televised, the revolution will be live. Well, look, here we go. This is what's happening. They're protesting out on the streets. So we're praying for our loved ones. We're praying for the governments, the nations, the people. Turn the lights back on and feed these people. This is not right. And we need to all together heal the world, make it a better place. All right. So much love to Cuba. Salute. I'm just happy to be here. I just don't know where to start. I'm going to introduce you to three amazing ladies. So to my left, who do we have? Hi, my name is Joanna Oliver. I am, well, I developed consultant chameleon. So I'm a chameleon professional and, and I guess chame- chameleon by identity as well. And I do lots of different things under that umbrella, including proofreading, um, bid writing, mentoring and i've also developed a couple of programs one of them is called grow your colors which is the same title as my chapter in the book fantastic and who's next to you my name is patricia bibi and i am a visual artist i do illustration in making i also do lino cards i also have a chapter in this book and um, i'm gonna tell you later and the beautiful lady in purple at the end, that's my favourite colour. Yeah, mine too. So I'm Ruth Pearson. I have developed a coaching strategy called Empowering Transformation. I'm really happy to be here today because I am Winston's mentor. This time last year, I didn't have a publishing company, but now, courtesy of Winston, now listen to your voice, publishing is out on the market and it actually has four books under its name already. So thank you, Winston. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, you are my mentee. I am your mentor and I'm glad to see you here with your fourth book. It's absolutely amazing. All righty, all righty, all righty. We're just going to get straight into it. We have a little trailer for you that we're going to show. And um, in this, this trailer, you're going to meet some of the women. So this is going to be like a two-part se- uh, well, series, two-part section. Yes. Part one is today, Pioneering Women Speak. Part two is coming up. So if we can run the trailer, that would be great. Thank you. trailer massive in the building (laughs) it's dynamic women who are telling their stories and they are transforming leaderships on the rise it's of paramount importance that one have an understanding of who they really are and believe in oneself because if you don't believe in you no one else can believe in you I am so excited to talk to you today about Pioneering Women, Leadership on the Rise. It's an amazing book that I was blessed to work with eight amazing uh, female founders um, about all things building your business. I You can uh, source your tickets, so free, through Eventbrite. Um, it's an anthology of nine pioneering women talking about their uh, contribution to um, 
effective business uh, in all its realms, really. I made the decision that I'm going to step outside of my comfort zone and to say yes to new opportunities. What did you do in 2020? Via Eventbrite, and we would love to have you there. I'm talking about neurodiversity in business from creativity, from entrepreneur mindset and goal setting. That's just a little flavour of what we'll be talking about. Please book in, love to see you. And to find out more about the book um, and buy it, right? So come and join the fun, come and join the party. We look forward to seeing you. I'm so grateful now that I'm part of this new project, Pioneering Women, Transformational Leadership on the Rise. Because as we work collaboratively with each other, one person can impact the next. And as we work together, we're going to be able to transform communities. And as we transform communities, we're going to allow more people to say yes to new opportunities. And so, as one of the nine wonderful women who are on this journey with me, I would like to speak to you and promote the importance of self-belief. Because I know only too well that self-belief can have an impact on one's mental and physical well-being. Them for a fabulous roadblock event. You're going to get development training, learn how to be more resilient. You're going to grow your colors. You're going to just have a plethora of different people there speaking their truths. And I want you to come along. Do not miss this event. It's free 99 absolutely free on eventbrite or you can and we're going to be zo uh, zooming it all the way and showing it on facebook click the link below go 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 and in particular i'll be talking about growing your colors how to go about that uh, what's at the root of that and i'll in i'll be inviting you to join me on my forthcoming programs where i'll be able to guide you through that process in a way that leaves you feeling that you're operating in alignment. So please join us. This is The Winsome Show and we are live in direct. So the Pioneering Women Speak authors are in the building. Make some noise, ladies. Woo -woo. Yeah. yeah. So let me tell you a little bit about the book. So meet Nine Dynamic and pioneering women who are transforming the landscape of UK, the UK business world. Collectively, their voice, their expertise in areas of hiring staff, building resilience, self-confidence and spirituality, producing an inspirational legacy. It is my honor to have you here, ladies. So the first guest that we've got up here is Joanna Oliver. Her chapter is called Grow Your Colors. Mum of three, Joanna Oliver has developed a chameleon career in a range of roles from bid writing, proofreading, mentoring, training, and lecturing. Having supported many people in their publishing finishing lines, this is Joanna's first non-academic published piece, reflecting her passion for helping people to grow their colours. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm loving the hair. Thank you. Looking all sunshiny. Yeah. Summer bunny. How you feeling? Yeah, hot, but good. How you feeling? Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> all right. So, what does growing your colours mean? So, growing your colours is a process, really. It's, um, I've developed it as a programme, but actually the reason it took me a long time to actually get that into a space of this is what it is, is because it's a process. It's an inside out process, so it's about um, working from the within and building our, co it's about confidence building, it's about self acceptance, it's about reflection, honest reflection, it's about processing our past, it's about um, getting in touch with our creativity yeah. and igniting our creativity and expressing that um, in the world. So Grow Your Colours has come very distinctly from the, ca the chameleon kind of concepts. So obviously the chameleon is all about shifting and blending and changing colours to suit different situations. So I guess what I'm saying is 
if you grow your colours and you don't have to feel confined in one space doing one thing all the time because there's room for you to express all of those different colours and all of that creativity. But the first thing you need to do is to grow your colours. It sounds like it's a very earthy approach yeah. and very rootsy and you seem like you're that kind of woman. Mm-hmm. How do you tap into your authentic self? Okay. Good. It's a good question because actually that's part of the reason why it took me a long time to kind of conceptualise this. It's because what I realised is the way that we'll um, tap into our authentic self is different for everybody. There's no one set way. So this is about having a programme um, or a process that reflects um, who we are individually. Okay. So for some people, if I say, all right, I want you to... Um, or, or, or try meditation. For some people, they'll be like, no, that's not what I do. That go, That's not in alignment with who I am. It might go against their kind of own spiritual beliefs or religion. And so for me, it's about not saying, oh, you know, you must do this, you must do that, and that here's the next stage, here's the next step. It's about kind of, again, recognising who you are and tuning into the things that work for you. So for me, meditation works. Prayer works um, to an extent for me as well. Um, being in nature works for me Um, I follow moon cycles that works for me that wouldn't necessarily work for everybody okay some people that will be out of alignment it wouldn't work for them and so I wouldn't be saying oh but in order to grow your college you need to do this this and this Mm. it's really about the person being an individual being who they are and tuning into what works for them and it's interesting because what's working for me right now is your colour here is matching Ruth's dress and you all look amazing. And amethyst is my, my, my stone, my birthstone, so I can see that you've got that on. It looks like it's amethyst. Little birdie told me it's your birthday tomorrow. Yeah. So we're going to wish you a happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. You know how we do on the Winston Show. So just off of the tail of that, when you grow another year older, mm. what is the lesson that you've learned in the last year? That we don't stop growing, ever. And I think that's, a, for me, that's a, a crucial part of this. You know, people talk about healing, and it's almost like people think that they reach a certain place in life, and that that place is then kind of the end. And for me, it's like, no, we're always going through a process so therefore we're always growing and we're always evolving we're always evolving yeah it's a, it's a constant ongoing process yeah well it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here and have you in this book congratulations all righty so welcome back you if you just tuned in this is the winsome show we've got a special edition we are promoting and talking about pioneering women speak yes they do power to the people we speak about hurt we speak about injustices we speak about love we speak about our families we speak about food drinks we, there's all different variety of things but as long as you're using your voice as an anchor in the world, to illuminate the world, to be a change agent, to make a difference. I think that that is what really counts. So today on the, I was going to say on the couch, but they're on the stools. So today on the stools, on the Winston Show, we've invited some of the authors in to express their expertise and their artistry. And we've got an artist coming up in a minute that's going to show us some pictures. So if you want to get get those pictures ready, that would be great. Um, She's absolutely amazing. Her name is Patricia Biddy. The Art of Transforming Your Life is her chapter. Patricia Biddy is a visual artist making vibrant lino cuts. Her art exhibits visions of life-affirming energy and as a result, People feel inspired, playful, and joyful. We all want a little bit of that in our lives. Never lose that inner child within. Her mission is to take people on a journey of creativity and transformation. BD's lino cut prints celebrate life's new beginnings through her playful and poetic imagination. Welcome, Patricia BD. How are you doing today? Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Looking all good in blue. Thank you for having me. Cool blue. I love it. I love it. <laughs> right, so before we go to our questions, just explain what um, art you have with us today. Oh, this is a uh, line of cut. This is one. It's called Star, mm, star Seat. 
And this is another one. It's called it's moon, Moonlight. This is another one. Beautiful. Yeah. And how long does it take you to put those together? Oh, it, it, it doesn't... Mm, it, I have to carve them first, draw them, carve them, and then ink them. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take me long. I just have to... First, I have to do research. I have to... So it's a creative process. It takes yeah. some time. You got to get into the feeling of it, haven't you? I really enjoyed reading your chapter. I think that sometimes you find little gems of people who who are just naturally gifted in writing, and I definitely would encourage you to write your own book as well after this anthology. So your story was really inf in, informative. So I would like to ask you, how does health and creativity connect, in your opinion? I think um, communication creativity and emotion are all connected. So when you um, flow creatively, you are more healthy, you, you express yourself, it helps your health. It, and also, as you can see, um, creativity, creative arts uh, workshops and programs help ailments, not only physical ailments, but mental ailments. So I think uh, we have a, an amazing gift. God has given the gift of creativity and imagination to change our lives, to create, not only just to create art, but to look after children, to, to create our business, to transform our life. Mm. And yeah, I think it's, it's, it, is, it helps when you are fully creative, you, you become more healthier. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm hearing that inside of your creativity, there's a way to be balanced and have well-being. Yeah, yes, exactly. and you've had a personal experience of that. So then that leads me to my second question, which is how do you heal after a toxic relationship? Because you talk about that in your chapter of your book. Yes, yes, yeah. This is a long story, but we want the short version today, <laughs> to milady. <laughs> short <laughs> version. <laughs> First, you have to realize uh, your value. You have to, uh, you know, it's, it's, it takes a process, but you have to let them go. When you let them go, not just let them go physically, but for your, all your, your, your thoughts, your, your emotions, you know, not talk about the, the, the toxic relationship, but let them go. And then focusing on your values, your highest values, and then do what is, uh, what you love, you know. I think for me it's very important because I do what I love, and I just let that go and focus on my highest values, which is creativity and and uh, inspiring other people with my creativity and you know. <laughs> So, 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 ladies, <laughs> ladies, you have to let Boo Boo go, let Ray Ray go, yeah? <laughs> Boo Boo and Ray Ray, they gone now. But as women, and I know for myself, I speak from my own perspective, sometimes it's hard to let him go. Like, maybe um, it's that company, maybe it's great, you know, jiggy jiggy. Mm -hmm. um, what was the bottom point to letting, letting that relationship end? It, it was a it was a long 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 process, but when it became very toxic and it became to the point that it was so toxic I couldn't you know I have to think of my children you know I have a life you know I have a life of, in front of me I cannot just you know if I didn't let go I wouldn't be here talking to you mm -hmm. I might just be <laughs> in another world you know so I thought uh, my life is you know is valuable so I have to do something with my life I can't just not let my life go. And, and, you know, disappear from this earth, you know, so mm. I thought you, you have to... And that's how serious it gets, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that you is how make serious. A decision because you don't realise it just takes one minute and then you will be gone, mm. you know, so mm. I thought it, it, it needs a lot of courage. Yeah. You know? That's how serious it can get in, in, that, in that journey. Thank you very much for mm -hmm. your honesty and your transparency. I really do appreciate that. So we've got one more guest to introduce mm -hmm. you to. <laughs> my lovely mentee, Ruth Pearson. Mm -hmm. She's wrote the chapter, Step Out of Your Comfort Zone. So when you're stepping out of your comfort zone, um, it can, it, it's hard. It really is challenging. Sometimes you just feel sad, um, it feels weird, and you, people stay stuck because they don't feel that they can come out of their fear and move forward. But this is why this chapter is really, really key. Ruth Pearson is the founder of Empowering Transformations, a coaching and training program which helps individuals and groups to step out of their comfort zones, to embrace their greatness within. She speaks about this in her contribution to the anthology, 
pioneering women speaks. She's also known as, um, as has been ordained as Pastor Ruth Pearson as well. Welcome. Okay. We made it. We definitely made it. <laughs> Purple's your colour. I know, definitely. definitely. Next time I'm going to have to come with purple hair and purple outfit. <laughs> I'd love to have the purple hair too, but my sons won't allow me. They say that's a bit too much. <laughs> no, mummy, no. No, no, no. Don't worry. So, Ruth, what is your definition of stepping out of your comfort zone? What's my definition? Well, if you sit down and you think about three circles... So you've got the inner circle, which represents the comfort zone, the place where you feel comfortable. And then after that, you've got the stretch zone. And then you've got the panic zone. Mm. Now, when you are walking, imagine you're walking down a line. So as you're walking down the line from the middle, then eventually you reach the edge of the zone where you're going from comfort zone to stretch zone. And you've got to be able to take that step. And sometimes people are too scared to take that step because they think, I'm going into an area I don't know. But all you need to do is just step one foot over the line and when you put one step over the line then you're in the stretch zone and then as you keep in that area you realize then that your stretch zone becomes your comfort zone because mm -hmm. you expand the space that you're in mm -hmm. so it's very much about go and try in new things and everybody's always scared of failing and this last week I learned a brilliant definition for the word fail fail stands for first attempt in learning so that's what happens when you step out of your comfort zone don't think about your failing. Think about it as your first attempt in learning. That's really quite poignant, and I can mm. definitely see the teacher out in you. First attempt in learning. Mm -hmm. This is where I think that um, on the process of the journey, how people can understand their kinesthetic way of learning, their visual way of mm -hmm. learning, and auditory ways mm -hmm. of learning. It's just really kind of easy working with you. So how important is God on your business journey? Oh, God is so important on my business journey. 2014, it's interesting how Patricia was talking about health challenges. So 2014, I had a major um, flare-up on my lupus, and it almost took my life. And I went to a women's retreat, and at this women's retreat, they basically prayed for me. I arrived on Friday, not able to walk, and Sunday, I went back home walking because of the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I went on a journey with God and saying, well, what do you want me to do? And... He basically told me I'm going to set up my own business called Listening to Your Voice, which is about listening to God's voice and listening to the voice of each other. And as we do that, that helps us to build relationships with God and also build relationships with each other. So God has been really integral in my whole journey. And he's just taken me on a journey these last seven years. And the more time I spend with him, the more he connects me with beautiful people and brings them back into my life. Like, how he brought you back into my life? And now we're going on this journey together. And... As we go on this journey together, then we're able to bring out, you brought out the greatness within me, and he's then able allowing other people to bring out that greatness within themselves too. And I definitely do feel a sense of deep gratitude from you, and it's been a pleasure to work with you because I think we complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that I like as a whole with this group of ladies that work together is that nurturing that we had on the group calls mm -hmm. and the processes and are you okay and the care and the consideration mm -hmm. that we've all shown each other. So it's been an absolute pleasure mm -hmm. to be um, on this journey with you all. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So my chapter was reflecting on resilience and it was really interesting because I like to research my chapters when I put things together. And for me, what I wanted to delve into was that often we're told that we must be resilient and be strong and to get up and the stiff upper lip but sometimes that's not okay there's been days in my life where I can't get out of bed due to depression you know there's we haven't got enough time to even go into that but it would be a sunny hot day like this and the curtains would be drawn and I'd be in my bed sleeping so for me resilience is not just about strength or your bounce back muscle but it's actually about endurance how much you're able to endure but not only to endure how much you're able to recover so we are uh, going to open up the floor now and we're going to do a little table talk with the ladies and we're going to be talking about reflection points because how the book is laid out in um, this right here pioneering women speak I mean it's not just us we do have some beautiful women there at the back there's nine of us in total so how the book is laid out is we've got a positive quote so mine is a body stays at rest until a greater force 
moves it. And then we have a little bit um, uh, like a, you know contact details with their pictures and that kind of thing. And then we go into the chapter. But at the end, what I wanted was for you at home to take away these reflection points, to have some questions. Because sometimes people, when they pick up books, they want to be their better selves. Do you see what I'm trying to say, um, ladies? And uh, we would all love for you to come to the launch. It's going to be on Sunday, the 31st of July at 4 p.m., isn't it? 4 p.m., yeah? Oh, Saturday. Sorry, I beg your pardon. The heat is getting to me. It's not a Sunday, it's a Saturday. Saturday, 31st of July. Do you want to take over? I don't know. Relax, yeah? 31st of July, and it's at 4, 4 to 8 p.m., and it's going to be a summit, and we're all going to have 15 minutes each to sew into you and to speak, and I'm looking forward to sharing that platform because right here you can see, am I my sister's keeper? Mm-hmm. Yes, I am. So let's talk reflections, and anyone can jump in first. Um, tell me about your processing on your reflection pages. Please go go first. Okay, I'll start. I think part of my process on my reflection page was how do you how do you actually step out of your comfort zone? What are some of the things that you need to do? And I think that when you're stepping out the comfort zone, the first thing you need to do is look at your positive skills. What are some of the things that you can do? so that you know that when you step out of your comfort zone, where you can go back to, because it's important that you have that reference of what you can do, so that when you step out... So do you think comfort zones are painful? Comfort zones, are, sometimes people stay in their comfort zones for too long and then they, they're scared to grow. Mm. I totally agree with that. Do you think comfort zones are painful? Absolutely. If I, um, so one of the things I do, you know, is I'm, I train and I lecture as well. Mm-hmm. So if I'm talking to students and comfort zones come up, I always make the point of saying that they're not pink and fluffy kind of spaces. They could be full of barbed wire. Mm. They could be really, really uncomfortable. So if, for instance, we're used to walking in a particular way, say if I'm used to walking and my hands are like this all the time, I'm used to manoeuvring life with my hands like this. I'm used to eating like this, I'm used to drinking like this, I'm used to people looking at me a particular way maybe, because my, what, why is that, you know, why are hands like that? And I've become accustomed to that. So the day that I decide to make that change that Ruth's talking about, and people aren't looking at me a particular way, and I am eating differently, and I'm drinking differently, and I'm doing everything differently, that can sometimes be really, really scary. Mm. So sometimes we stay with our hands like this because at least we know, you know that kind of what you know, mm-hmm. you kind of stay with what you know. So, yeah, absolutely, I don't think they're necessarily comfortable. Cause, cause Maybe it's the wrong term to say comfort zone because mm. people always assume that it's comfortable. Because mm. we don't know what we don't know, right, ladies? Right. Right. Can you give us an example, uh, Patricia, of when you had a comfort zone challenge? I, don't, I, I just can't say when, it's, when I'm creative and I want to create something different, I, I think uh, I have to do something completely different and when I find my out of my comfort zone, I, this is where I see the magic happens. Mm. It, it, it is amazing. This is very, very difficult. It is very, you have to push yourself, but when you push yourself a little bit more and then you get out of your comfort zone, which is not easy, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. you are getting used, this is where the magic happens and it mm-hmm. always happens. And it's all about the magic because when we talk about words, words are power, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sounds and, sounds and um, uh, traveling the speed of light. So transformative leadership on the rise. What does that mean to you, Patricia? It's, it's being... It's, it's being able to transcend mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and make changes and totally change your life, not just for, for some time, but totally change it. Mm-hmm. 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 You know? I think for me, um, my business log is a butterfly, and I think transformation and leadership on the rise is that change when you go from a caterpillar to a butterfly. That You know, you can't go back. Mm. You know, the caterpillar, mm. no matter how much, once it becomes a butterfly, it can't go back. Different. So once you start on that journey out, you can't go back. But that's a beautiful talking about that cocoon phase, mm-hmm. that phase where you hibernate and mm-hmm. you are getting ready for summer, spring. You're mm-hmm. getting ready to be your best self, maybe even your authentic self. Mm-hmm. So when we're talking about transformation, what has to happen in the mind, Joe, Anna, for you to transform? I think the reflection element of is a big part of it, really. And I think sometimes with the butterfly analogy, we can assume that when someone's in the cocoon, that nothing's happening. Mm. 
And I always think that, like, in silence is activity. Mm. So whereas we might think, oh, I'm not, you know, and we can do it to ourselves, you know, that inner voice can say, oh, I'm not doing, I'm not. We are doing, Mm -hmm. we are growing, we are investing. We may not be doing it out there, but we are doing it in here. So for me, part of that is about, when you say what happened, what needs to happen in the mind, I'm not really, I don't really... um, champion the cognitive approach like as in just changing the words i think it's about belief so the belief that we um apply to what it is that we're doing so the whole thing around holding our vision around tuning in to who we are and what's going on around us and knowing what's for us and what's not for us and i think for me that will guide the way that we communicate with people the respect that we show people um, the respect that we show ourselves and the choices that we make in our lives. So for me, it's partially about changing the way that we think, but really it's about the way that we feel, which I think is what Patricia mm-hmm. was talking about as well in terms of that creative energy for me is an emotional energy. Mm-hmm. Did you want to join in there, Ruth? Yeah, I think, I think definitely. I mean, it's like I always say to people the word I can and can I. They're the same words, and it's about mm-hmm. which way we put those words. If we put the word I can... We're saying that that's a positive thing. Yes, I might need help. I might need to go on a journey, but I can do it. But if I say, can I, it's that element of doubt. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and therefore, if you've got elements of doubt, then sometimes you might be scared of actually taking the steps that you need to take. So I think definitely it's about what you say to yourself. Mm -hmm. And that journey that you say to yourself, that self-talk that you say to yourself is so critical. And I know for me, it's like in the book, I talk about the words, I am enough. And it was such a long time, it took me to actually embrace those words that I am enough, that within me, everything I need is there. Mm. Because sometimes we think we have to go external to find that. And actually, once we discover that within us is everything we need, that was a big breakthrough moment for me. Mm. And I think as also, when I was hearing you speak, um, Jo, I think that you were talking about, like, is your life and the perspective of life, is it half full or is it half empty? Mm-hmm. You know, what is it that your your glass of life is? Mm-hmm. And I think that that's really fundamental to when we're talking about neuro-linguistics, programming and changing your outset and your, your mind and, and how you feel mm-hmm. about the journey. So this is really, really exciting. Welcome, welcome. This is The Winston Show. Where have you been? I've been locked away, but they've let me out! <laughs> woo and we're celebrating birthdays and all sorts and we do want you to come along to the to the launch of pioneering women speak saturday the 31st of july it's a free event it's on it's going to be live streamed on facebook and it's going to be on eventbrite as well so do grab your tickets and get involved in the notion now in conclusion i just would like for you each to just take a moment in terms of your reflection questions and just let our our, in the cameras just let our uh viewers know what they're going to get from your chapter because i've seen it i've read it all i've edited it all and the stories have been amazing really heart touched and really heartfelt so what is it you want to get what do you want the reader to get from the um uh, chapter and your social media links so we're going to start with you ruth Okay, so I think for me, I want the readers to get the quote that's in my chapter that says, listen to your inner voice and do not let anyone stop you from being the person within you know you need to be. And my social media links, I'm available on Facebook as Ruth Pearson. I'm available on LinkedIn as Ruth Pearson. And I'm available on Instagram as Empowering Transformation. Beautiful. Patricia. Yes. Mm. Uh, about my chapter, I think I would like uh, everybody to find their own creativity and to be able to let go of the past and um, find your own values. And my handles are pat- at Patricia Bidi. Yeah. In everything is just Patricia Bidi. And how are we spelling Bidi? B I D I. Good, good, good. Because I got told off for Easy. getting that wrong, didn't I? <laughs> <Easy>. <laughs> it's Easy. not that. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm dyslexic, y'all. And that's one thing we d- we didn't actually touch on, which we will in a minute, which is the neurodiversion quadrant of this book. Mm. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I've got another question. I, I actually want, I'm going to follow Ruth suit and kind of uh, mention the quote, mm. actually, because my quote is a Yann Van Sant, mm. where she, in, in her, um, I think it was Tucking the Power Within, and she says, uh, act like you know the truth. 
because you do. And it's that thing that we do when we don't act like we know the truth. And I think that that's really crucial in, in growing your colours. So for me, it's about, it doesn't matter what that looks like. We're not accountable to anybody else. We're accountable to ourselves, right? Mm. So who we are is who we are. And it's only us that we have to, no matter who we're laying down with it in at night, you know what I'm trying to say, we're lying down with ourselves always, right? So we are the only people that we have to kind of explain ourselves to if we feel that we need to do that. So for me, growing your colours, that chapter, all of those reflection questions and everything that I've said, whether you're taking, I think something I say is whether it takes 10 minutes, 10 days, 10 hours ten years. or 10 years, mm. it's okay. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about just whatever it is, it's meant to be. Mm -hmm. Go mm -hmm. with the flow. Mm -hmm. And you've always got that kind of earthy, relaxed, kind of like a cool hippie vibe. Yeah. <laughs> He's bohemian <laughs> up in here. Yeah. So for me, when I was doing the re re reflection questions, I actually went over it twice because mm -hmm. I was just like, what, what do I really want to say here? Because this is an opportunity to learn, develop, grow and to be your best you you've heard us talking about butterflies and how they can transform you've heard us talking about being our authentic selves and how we can rise and it is pioneering women speak transformative leaderships on the rise so we are all leading in our respective fields right about now so reflecting on resilience for me i think what i wanted to tap into was that you can feel bad and recover mm -hmm. this too shall pass mm -hmm. and i just feel like we're always evolving to be our best selves in this world. It's, it sounds a bit cliche, but it is about healing the world, making it a better place. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson, you know, talks about um, that quite a, quite a bit in, in um, his song. And when we're making it a better place, we're feeling better within. Because if we haven't got the wholeness within, we can give to no one. We put mm -hmm. the mask first mm -hmm. on our face. I think someone might have said that in the book. Sorry. But... I'm saying it just quickly. If it's you, shout out. We put the mask on first in the aeroplane that's going down or wherever we are, yeah? And then we can help others. So always, always remember that. So we're just going to quickly close soon because I believe time's coming to an end, isn't it? Sad, isn't it? Coming to an end. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo. Um, what we didn't touch on was that this book uh, has not neuro divergent qualities about it and people, 70% uh, of the authors are, including myself, so I'm dyslexic. You're a lecturer. Yeah. What was that like managing, um, you know, being a part of that process and managing these different dynamics of people? <laughs> okay, so for, it's really interesting because for me, I think I operate on a person-centred approach, yeah. right, through and through everything. So I think everything that we bring is all connected together. Mm -hmm. So the reason that you have, not the reason you have dyslexia, but I think the reason you're dynamic, the reason oh, you have a really you. good memory, yeah, and you're, you, you can speak really well, is, I think, partially a direct consequence of the dyslexia. Mm -hmm. So everything is connected together. You often find that people are creative in a particular way because they've had to deal with certain things. So I think that if we're being person-centered, it doesn't matter about the, di the new, wh whatever the diversity is, whether that's neuro or any other type mm -hmm. of diversity, if we're being person-centred, we will accept the whole person with everything that they're bringing and recognise that there may be some things that are a bit, oh, but there are other things that are like, ooh, and we just tune in mm -hmm. and zoom in on the ooh stuff. That's how I see it. So for me, I think That makes it stronger, doesn't it? It makes you stronger. The woo-woo, All yeah. of us, all mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. So I think we all kind of, worked really well together, connected together, mm. and it was a lovely flow. Mm. And what I'd say is, um, I'm going on a bit now, but <laughs> what I'd say <laughs> is that there's lots of um, anthology work that takes place. I've been invited lots of times to be part of an anthologies. What I didn't expect in this process, so anybody that's thinking about the next, because there will be more of these, yep. is that there's actually a process that takes place. It's not just about you know, you write your chapter, you submit your chapter and mechanical like that. We mm. spent time together and we worked things out and we shared, we, we developed a shared value within this. And I think that that in itself was developmental, it was a growth process. So I think that there was added value. That's what I'd like mm -hmm. to say. Okay, okay mm. thank you. So um, 
Patricia, you had a recent diagnosis, um, uh, which you shared with the group. You don't have to share it now. But how did you feel supported in that approach as a neurodiversion? Yes, I person? think I think it was it, it was really good because I didn't know uh, that I've been living with this. And three months ago, I was diagnosed with ADHD, and I have um, I met somebody. It's called Marcia in the in the Winsome workshop, and that was it was worked very well, very well. I, we, I didn't know that I had this, but then we complement each other with Marcia, and I didn't know how. So she's very structured, and I'm very, uh, you know, all over the place. All of, and, and we just work with our strengths, and uh, we complement each other beautifully. So I think, uh, yeah, knowing that you have something is very important because when you value, when you know yourself, you can deal better with things. So I think. I have many strengths, but also there's things that I, can, I have to work with, with, and I know now what, what they are. And it's been amazing being in the group because everybody support me. Now it's just it's just much better. Excellent. And uh, I feel very supported and very understood now. So, and, it's, know, and it's a pleasure to also you, you know <laughs> have you here, Ruth. Very quickly. I think for me, it's like when it was interesting when everyone was like talking about the dyslexia. Both of my children are dyslexic, and everyone keeps saying to me, I have dyslexic tendencies. So it's something I'm going to look into to see whether or not this is the reason why my brain's wired the way it is. Because everyone keeps saying, you do things completely different than everybody else. So, you know, so I think that's been what's really good about the whole journey, that you can look in the mirror and think, actually, that's something to celebrate. Yeah. Because mm. it makes you different. You're not the same as everybody else. Indeed, indeed. We, we are set apart wonderfully and uniquely made. Ladies, it's been a pleasure to have uh, you here. Let me pick you up, book you up. Ooh. I'm so excited to be to come back and and share this moment with you. Um, and, and you could have been anywhere in the world and you're here on the Winsam Show. So... If you're at home and you're intrigued by what we've talked about today, that's just the tip of the iceberg. On Saturday, the 31st at 4 p.m., we are going to be doing little mini sessions of 15 minutes training with these powerful women, yeah, pioneering women speak, transformative leaderships on the rise. And we're all going to be sharing in our expert field. So I need you to be there. It's on Eventbrite. We'll share it on the page. Wherever you see this link, do come along. It's free. It's free now. Nah, nah. Um, so, I'd love to hear from you if you want to be on the Winston Show. Get in touch with me on my social medias, Facebook, Winston Duncan, Twitter, um, Instagram. I'm just all over. Just Google me, Winston Duncan, and you'll find me. And I'd love to get you on this show. Um, also, go to my website, www.bookconfidence coach.com i help these lovely ladies to get their stories out and i can help you too as well so i think that it's really key that you you know get in touch and we can work together and be a part of the second anthology and who knows i might do a male version hey <laughs> <laughs> that's possible so thank you very much i want you to spread the word let them know that we are coming this is the winsome show and this is showing real women all right so tell the world that we are here and remember keep cuba in your hearts we're praying for cuba big up to amaze tv we love having you have us and jay you're amazing thank you for having us that's it time's up we are thank you thank you bye see you later and they are transforming leaderships on the rise it's of paramount importance that one have an understanding of who they really are and believe in oneself. Because if you don't believe in you, no one else can believe in you. I am so excited to talk to you today about Pioneering Women, Leadership on the Rise. It's an amazing book that I was blessed to work with eight amazing uh, female founders um, about all things building your business. I You can uh, source your tickets uh, free through Eventbrite. Um, it's an anthology of nine pioneering women talking about their uh, contribution to um, effective business uh, in all its realms, really. I made the decision that I'm going to step outside of my comfort zone. 
and to say yes to new opportunities. What did you do in 2020? Via Eventbrite and we would love to have you there. I'm talking about neurodiversity in business from creativity, from entrepreneur mindset and goal setting. That's just a little flavour of what we'll be talking about. Please book in, love to see you. And to find out more about the book um, and buy it, right? So come and join the fun, come and join the party. We look forward to seeing you. I'm so grateful now that I'm part of this new project, Pioneering Women, Transformational Leadership on the Rise. Because as we work collaboratively with each other, one person can impact the next. And as we work together, we're going to be able to transform communities. And as we transform communities, we're going to allow more people to say yes to new opportunities. And so, as one of the nine wonderful women who are on this journey with me, I would like to speak to you and promote the importance of self-belief. Because I know only too well that self-belief can have an impact on one's mental and physical well-being. And for a fabulous roadblock event, you're going to get development training, learn how to be more resilient, you're going to grow your colours, you're going to just have a plethora of different people there speaking their truths. And I want you to come along. Do not miss this event. It's free nanny nan absolutely free on eventbrite or you can and we're going to be zo uh, zooming it all the way and showing it on facebook click the link below go 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 and in particular i'll be talking about growing your colors how to go about that uh, what's at the root of that and i'll in i'll be inviting you to join me on my forthcoming programs where i'll be able to guide you through that process in a way that leaves you feeling that you're operating in alignment. So please join us.